Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to look at the first steps you need to take to begin your writing experience in Papyrus Author. With a few quick mouse clicks, you can start writing and begin your journey in a matter of moments. So let's take a look. Okay, so let's start straight off by double clicking on Papyrus's icon which will straight away open Papyrus's start screen, which is your jumping off point for all things Papyrus. So uh, obviously the first tab is your home tab, which shows all your recent documents. The next one is new text. New text really is just um, single documents, maybe something like cover letters or so on. Nothing too in depth like a book, whereas New projects is exactly that. It's for books and more substantial things that might have databases and so on attached. The Learn tab or the Learn tile takes you to the wiki page uh, and also my videos and instructional manuals. And My Files is basically uh, like a file explorer showing you all your Papyrus um, files on your computer. So now I'm going to get to the good stuff and start creating a document. So I'm going to come up to new text. I won't really talk about these templates at this stage. Instead, I'm just going to choose the manuscript uh, template and go create new document or create new document from template. I'll quickly uh, shut the navigator. So down the middle of the screen here, you can see the main document. To either side is the pinboard areas. These pinboard areas can be used for storing anything like uh, sticky notes, text snippets and images. Across the top you can see a number of icons. These are quite common. You would expect to see most of these within most word processors. These icons relate to um, text formatting, highlighting and comments. These ones, however, are more unusual you wouldn't expect to see these in for instance word this is to export to um, an ebook and this is to pdf across the top you have your standard menus that you would again expect to see in almost any word processor but here is the one that is uh, specific to papyrus and it deals with all the tools that are available to you as a writer within papyrus i'm going to open the navigator now I'll just increase its size a bit. The navigator is the tool that you would use to obviously navigate throughout your book. Um, and it will quickly take you to any point in your book, uh, be it a chapter, a scene, a comment, or, or anything like that. It's a really quick and fast tool for navigating through your book. Um, I'll quickly demonstrate how um, the chapters immediately appear. So I'm going to insert a page break. Simply then go to uh, my styles menu and I'm going to select chaptered number, uh, chapters with numbers and it's instantly created that chapter there. And again, you can see that it's very easy to navigate through. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the status bar. Um, this is where you can turn on and off the spell checker, but not only the spell checker, but also style analysis. So if I turn on style analysis, it will analyze and look for problems within your text. Now what I've done here, I've just copied a little bit of text in from one of my books. And if you watch as I'm turning it on and off, it's highlighting problems with some words. And if you hover over the, the word that's highlighted, it will point out the problem. Okay. Pass author also has a really extensive thesaurus that was designed specifically for writers or creative minds so if you right click and go to thesaurus that's quite hard to say it has a lot more choices than your average thesaurus um, and what i find is by having that really extensive list it does help you think a little bit more creatively so I'm now going to go up to the author's menu and look at the publish portion of the author's menu. Now here you can publish your, uh, your finished manuscripts to a number of different file formats, including ebook, PDF and Word. Word obviously is mainly more for sending to your editor or your publisher. PDF would be used for a secure format and paperbacks and ebooks, obviously for ebooks. 
Okay, so that's the initial steps of getting started with Papyrus. At this point, you're ready to go and uh, start with your writing and explore um, Papyrus yourself if you like. Okay, so that was the first part, that was the free version. In the second half, I'm basically gonna carry on from where I just left off, but in Pro. And this is just to show you the additional tools that Pro has to offer. So let's take a look. Okay, so we're back in the same document that I created in the free version, but now you can see there's another six icons, and these are all related to um, the Pro version. You can also access these icons through the um, Authors menu. So the first one I'm going to look at is Characters. So as soon as I click on it, it's going to ask me to create a Characters database, which is what I want to do. And it's going to ask whether I want to convert to a project, because this was just a single one-off document. If you're thinking of creating a book, I highly recommend going to a project, because it will then create a single folder and keep all your databases in that folder. So I'm going to go yes, and I'll just go convert and keep current location. So now I'm in the character database, I'm going to open up the sample uh, form. And as you can see, uh, you can fill in as much or as little as you want. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to actually create my own character form or character entry. So here you can see I've got a character that I've created called Rex. So if I just go back to characters and go to new, I'll just put the name and I'll go apply and I'll go back to the main document and you can now see that that character is linked. And this will apply to not only characters, but also locations and items. If I come over to the navigator and turn on the options, it will also link into the navigator so you can see how many times that character was mentioned uh, in any specific chapter or scene and this applies to not only um, the navigator but navigator's big brother the organizer which is also part of pro so in the organizer um, it gives you an overview of everything that's happening in your book it's also in a full screen tab mode, so this can be dragged off to another monitor, which is how I use it. I have it to one side, um, and then I can you be working on the back end of the book while I'm doing the creative stuff on the, another monitor. And the organizer gives you an overview of everything, as well as the ability to create everything from chapters, scenes, events, characters, locations, you name it. So I'm going to go back to the main document again. And now I'm going to look at the timeline. Now the timeline uh, is great for pacing out your book in terms of timing. Um, and you can do this down to the second. Now at the moment there's only one thread, but you can have as many threads as you want. These can be story arcs or character arcs. Personally I have four, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up a screen now to show you my threads. And I have, uh, main thread is always chapter then a thread for scenes, then a thread for events, and then key events. But it's up to you how you set this up. The next thing is ThinkBoard. Again, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop on an image of my ThinkBoard at my, with my current work in progress. And your ThinkBoard is basically Papyrus Authors mind mapping software. This is great for both outlining and troubleshooting your books, um, but you can use it however you want. The next thing is the research database. So again, I'm clicking on the research database and it's asking me to create that. So I'm gonna go create. That then creates the database within your project folder. And if I double click on the entry, this is all the research that was gathered from the internet. So you can install plugins into your uh, browser, be it Firefox or Chrome, and what will happen then is as soon as you click on that plugin, it will place um, the research into your project in either the global resources, so <laughs> global resources, which is the entire book, or even your chapters and scenes. Next thing I'm going to look at is 
uh, direct speech mode. Now what this does, if I turn it on, it turns off all the text except direct speech, or sorry, except for dialogue. This enables you to really focus in on your dialogue and hone that to a high level. This one refers to ghost text, and what ghost text is, is if I click it, it's basically removed that text uh, from any exported document that I create from this file. So now that ghosted out, previously ghosted out text will reappear in your main document. Um, I'm now going to go back down to um, style analysis. With the pro version, you do get additional levels of style analysis, not just the basic. So it will add a great deal of more scrutiny to your, your book, as well as the readability analysis. And readability analysis really helps you focus in on your target audience's reading level because it tells you how easy or how difficult your text is to read. So if, for instance, you were targeting to a teen audience, you could hone your right into that. Also, things that are added uh, that aren't in the free version is timestamps, which I really like. Timestamps shows you when any specific point in your book was last edited. Um, this is great for tracking all the changes in your book. And also typewriter mode. And what typewriter mode does is it keeps your text uh, in the middle of the screen when you're writing. So your eyes don't have to follow your text down the screen as you're working. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that video. And uh, now this was just a brief getting started video. And regardless of whether you're in the free version or the pro version, the steps are exactly the same. Now, what I also want to say is I've used uh, Papyrus Author for several years now. And the journey of creating your book within Papyrus is incredibly enjoyable. It's a very immersive piece of software. And everything about Papyrus makes creating your book from start to finish, from those first few words to your finished product, be it an ebook or a paper book, an absolute joy. It's an incredibly enjoyable journey uh, with this piece of software. So until next time, I'll see you later.